this. Manchester by the sea. Let's have a review. What happened to my brother? So that's the Lee Chandler. I don't understand. Which part are you having trouble with? Well, I can't be his guardian. Well, your brother provided for your nephew's upkeep. I think the idea was that you would relocate. You may have heard that Kenneth Lonergan's Oscar-nominated third feature as writer-director, Manchester by the Sea, is very, very sad. What you may not have heard is that, for the vast majority of its running time, it is very, very funny. Lonergan, an established playwright as well as filmmaker, can write, and he can write killer dialogue. Manchester by the Sea has an intricate, complicated, extremely well-crafted structure, a thematically rich story covered with depth and sensitivity, but it also boasts absolutely wonderful back-and-forth banter that is always witty and sometimes hilarious. In fact, it's far funnier than most of the comedies released over the last few years. This banter mainly occurs between Lee Chandler, played by Casey Affleck, and his teenage nephew Patrick, played by Lucas Hedges. Patrick's dad, played by Kyle Chandler, that last name is just weirdly coincidental, that's Lee's older brother, has died from his chronic heart condition, and he and Lee are coming to terms with their grief and each other, as Lee has been named Patrick's guardian in his brother's will. They get along, terrifically in fact, but Lee has other grief in his not-too-distant past, the kind shredded and studded with suffocating guilt, and he is spiky and disoriented, removed slightly from the real world, ajar and adrift. Instant fatherhood was not on his agenda, but somehow he has to make it work, not only because he loves his nephew, but also because his brother, by all accounts an extremely decent man, was very much his best friend. I had this strange impression that Manchester by the Sea may be composed of endless scenes of a dreary mope, but that is so not the case. Besides the many firecracker scenes between Affleck and Hedges, both are superb, and similarly excellent scenes involving Affleck and Michelle Williams as his wife, CJ Wilson as his brother's best friend, and many other inhabitants of the titular Massachusetts town, all played by excellent actors, there are scenes that simply follow Patrick's storyline, leaving Lee off screen, doing his own thing. It's a wider, broader, bigger film than its marketing may suggest, crackling with energy, pace and dramatic heft. It's also stunningly beautiful. The seaside locations are exquisitely shot by Jodie Lee Leaps. Massachusetts is rendered simultaneously realistically, cold, old, ornery, and somewhat idealistically, the bounteous water and highwayside forests sparkling with crisp winter light. The music, a combination of original compositions by Leslie Barber and well-used classical pieces, is bold and rich, edging the visuals into poetic mini-montages that consistently punctuate the very human drama. The production design, while never drawing attention to itself, is flawless. I personally know Massachusetts very well, and this is Massachusetts. Manchester by the Sea is a great film. It is thoroughly involving, deeply moving, and sparkles with humanity. Highly recommended, and my favourite of the big Oscar contenders for 2016. Hello. Hello, Lee. I just went to call and say I'm sorry. How's Patrick doing? Well, he doesn't really open up with me. Do you actually have sex with these girls? Strictly basement business. What does that mean? It means I'm working on it. Now, speaking of the Oscars and Manchester by the Sea, let me just tell you about Casey Affleck and his chances for the Best Actor Oscar at the upcoming Oscars. The other day, Denzel Washington won the Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actor, and he would certainly, I reckon, be Casey Affleck's main competition for the Oscar. The reason this is significant is that there are around 6,000 voting members of the Academy, and of those, the largest voting block is the acting block. 
Now, that comprises about 1,200 of the Academy members. By contrast, there's only 377 members who are in the directing block. So the acting block is the biggest, and every single member of the acting block is a member of the Screen Actors Guild, and they voted for Denzel Washington. Therefore, ipso facto, the largest block voted for Denzel will again vote for Denzel at the Oscars. Therefore, the fact that Denzel won the Screen Actors Guild Award means that all of a sudden he's actually kind of the front runner for the Oscar instead of Casey Affleck. See how that math works out? So there you go. The other thing that people have been asking me about is why isn't Casey Affleck getting more flack for this thing in his past about these lawsuits that he settled with a couple of women who came forward against him based on his behavior during the filming of a movie he directed called I'm Not There. And why was there so much flack given to Nate Parker about some similarly settled rape suits that came against him? when his film Birth of a Nation was in the awards mix and subsequently got drowned out of it because of these allegations. Well, let me tell you my theory. Nate Parker was involved essentially in allegations of rape while he was at college. Casey Affleck was essentially accused of what amounts to sexual harassment during the shooting of a film. All the folks in Hollywood can relate to one and not the other because very few people actually have rape during college allegations in their past. But the casting couch has existed in Hollywood since Hollywood began. In other words, I would warrant you that over 95% of the directors who vote for the Oscars have at some point in their past been a little sleazy with the women on their film sets, whereas very few of them have actually been accused of raping people in college. See the difference? It's a case of only those not being in glass houses throwing stones. And I would suggest that what Casey Affleck has been accused of lurks in the background of a whole lot of people in Hollywood. And that's why a whole lot of people in Hollywood are not calling him out on it. Watch that, watch this, and I'll die down.